Thank you. This is work by Murugeshwari, Saki Bhutta, and myself at Tufts University, and uh, Alan Fern, Prasad Tadipali, and Shan Shu at, at uh, Oregon State University. And what we do in this paper is to provide a new approach, and a, really a first step in this new approach, uh, for online stochastic planning. And the main effect is to work in very large, both state spaces and action spaces. So unless, like the previous talk, I will not assume that there's a small number of actions. And we do this through a compilation approach to integer linear programming. So let me stress the point of large branching factor state spaces and action spaces. In a lot of domains, we can think about the problem description in terms of, of state variables and state variables and action variables. Uh, M action variables, which means that we have an exponential number of states, this is standard, but also that we have an exponential number of actions. If, for example, if you have a large elevator building with many elevators, you have uh, variables to control each variable uh, elevator, and you have an exponential number of, combi of combined actions. In these domains, we also have often what we call exogenous events, like people coming to the elevator in the elevator domain. And in this case, there's also an exponential branching factor in terms of the stochastic number of possible next states. For every individual action in individual state, there's a huge uh, next state branching factor. So to give you perspective about our work, you can think about it for coming from three different uh, points of uh, previous work, uh, which is not how this came about, but it's interesting to think about this. Planning as satisfiability hindsight optimization and conservation planning, and I will review each of those for a couple of minutes just to give the right context. I don't think I have to introduce planning as satisfiability. Um, the idea is to take a planning problem to compile it into a propositional formula where the satisfying assignment of the formula provides a plan. Um, Carmel, who just spoke, uh, extended this idea, in some sense, to conformant planning, where a probabilistic planning problem is compiled. In this case, it's a maxed weighted SAT uh, problem. And you get a straight line plan, a plan that you fix in advance, and which um, uh, gives you some guarantees of uh, performance. However, this is not the general stochastic planning problem, because in stochastic planning, you want to choose your second action after you've seen the result of the stochastic first action. And that's the question that we ask here. Can we generalize this and solve the real general stochastic planning problem rather than uh, the conformant one? We do this in the context of online planning, which was just described. And the way I see it is instead of optimizing everything in advance, you know that you're working with a limited time per step. And the guarantees you're looking for is that should you be given enough time, you will be able to optimize. So ideally, in the limit, if you're given enough time per step, you'll choose the optimal action in the current state. You'll take that action, and in the next state, you'll do the same, and so on. Hindsight optimization is a trick or technique, whichever way you want to call it, um, which does almost that. It works in the online planning. I well, would stress it's not optimal. So even given enough time, it will not always choose the optimal action. And this uh, uh, picture tries to illustrate what it does. Um, so we are currently in state S, S0, and we have a number of actions that we could take. This is an enumeration of all the actions that we could take. What we do is for each of those actions, we sample a number of possible transitions from this action. So we look at this action. We sample a number of transitions from that action. Because it's a stochastic domain, there will be different possible outcomes. And then we do a, a, a step of self-delusion in that we pretend that we know all future non-deterministic events in the world. And so each of those lines represents a possible deterministic future. You fix and you pretend that you know everything that will happen in future stochastically. And then you have a deterministic planning problem that you can solve. You average the results of the value you got from each of those, and you get a value for this action. This scheme is obviously not optimal and can be easily tricked, but was shown to be quite useful in uh, many domains. Um, the downside 
as I, sh at least for this talk, is that I have to test every action separately, which is not efficient. So the question for this previous line of work is, can I extend this to work with an exponential number of actions? And finally, I want to mention a third line of uh, work, which was actually my starting point for this, which was a paper by uh, Kumar, Wu, and, and Silberstein in 2012, who applied uh, some ideas of compilation to domain-specific uh, bird conservation problem. Essentially, they translated the conformant, if you want, bird conservation problem into a mixed integer linear program and solved it. Um, this did work with an exponential number of actions, and so for this line of work, uh, the question is, can we generalize and do general planning rather than the domain-specific planning? So that's what I promised before, and uh, there are a couple of caveats, and so the first one comes now, is we don't solve the general problem, we solve the hindsight optimization version of that problem. That's why it's the first step. And I didn't put a lot of technical details on the slide, but I want to encourage you to come to the poster if you're interested. There'll be a lot more technical details on the poster. This is roughly what the, uh, our algorithm does. We start with a domain and problem specification. In any language you want, we start with Riddle because that's kind of the current standard. We translate it into uh, some propositional representation, either a tree or rules. This comes with a Riddle uh, package and we do some extensions to that. So we have the transition function as well as the reward, and we do this trick of determinizing future. Basically, we flip the coins in advance. For each of that possible future, we generate uh, a future trajectory. So there are three parts for this, so actually two parts to the ILP. The reward function is translated into the ILP objective. This is different than what people have done before, and the transitions are translated into local linear constraints that constrain the transition of every action. Let me f flip to the next slide. This, this is an attempt to visualize this. So over here, every horizontal line is one of those determinized future. Even if you take the same action at the same state in different futures, you might get a different result. That's what this means. And the dots are just state as our time point. So if I'm at a particular time point, at a particular trajectory, I have to take a specific action. For hindsight optimization, the simplifying point is that the only thing we have to constrain is that we are in the same state in the beginning, and in that first state, we have to take the first action, which is the same. So we put constraints to put equality over all the red dots. All the, bl the black dots are unconstrained in hindsight optimization. If you wanted to solve the general problem, you'd have to put constraints over everything. So this is how we implement the hop requirement here, and that's our algorithm. And I didn't explain the details, so it's impossible for me to explain why, but we can do this in a factored way in the sense that it's polynomial in the problem in the number of variables and not in the number of actions or the number of states. So it uses a factored representation. Another important uh, fact about this is that we translate everything into one ILP, one integer linear program. So we do not have to do what's done here and enumerate the actions and evaluate each of them separately. We have one integer linear program that we solve that returns this maximizing action. And this was not obvious for me at the beginning, um, so that's why we wrote the proposition, and essentially what I want you to read from here is the title, uh, which is, our algorithm would be equivalent to the hindsight of the, to the inefficient way of doing the same thing. Uh, assuming that you get the same coin flips and you break ties in the same way, you get the same result. So I want to describe a few experiments. There's a lot more in the paper, so I only selected a few of those. Uh, we handcrafted one domain to illustrate uh, kind of the best case scenario for our problem, and we took uh, five domains from the planning competition. We evaluated it in a standard way of uh, taking each problem, running it 30 times in order to uh, account for stochasticity, and each of those for a depth of uh, 40 steps, and calculate the reward. We evaluate under two regimes. This will become important. You will see why. Uh, one when we get a very generous allocation of time per step, and one when we get a very stingy allocation of time per step. 
And we compared to PROST, uh, which is a Monte Carlo tree search algorithm. You all know about that thanks to the previous talk, and which did very well in the last planning competitions. And I would not want to pra uh, praise the, the authors of PROST for making their system available and, and the fact that it just runs off the shelf and so you can provide uh, baseline results uh, very easily. So uh, I'll just go quickly over some results. This is copycat is our handcrafted domain. It's no surprise that we're doing very well in it. Um, the, the point that I want to make is the reason that PROST doesn't do well here is because, just like in the previous talk, it enumerates all the actions. If we have a very large action space, it cannot even try all the actions, and it cannot actually succeed. So that's the main point about scaling in this paper. We want to scale uh, to large action spaces. Uh, another domain that we'll go very quickly through is the navigation domain from IPPC. That's a domain where there are dangerous actions but if you pretend that you know the future, you'll think that they're not dangerous. So that's where a, a, a place where the hindsight heuristic is very bad, and you can see that our system doesn't do very well here. So there's a necessary, at least for this paper compilation, that the hindsight heuristic will be a reasonable heuristic for that domain. Uh, we tried a few more domains here, two, two domains on one slide. This is the sysadmin domain where you reboot computers who are connected in a network. And I presume you've seen Game of Life at some point uh, in your career, where you can re recover cells in a Game of Life uh, map. And what you see here is evaluation with generous and stingy time per step. And I should explain the columns. So there is uh, our performance. This is the average reward. Prost performance, the average reward. And this is an important column which says, how many of the 30 times 40 ILPs? There are 30 runs and 40 ILPs that we run. And uh, how many of those were solved to optimality? Our system can tolerate uh, finding an admissible action, which is any action really, uh, rather than optimal at some of the time points and still recover good behavior. This tells you how often do we solve the ILP to optimality. So you see with the generous time per step, um, we solve most of those to optimality, or all of them. We get pretty good performance, and well, our system is doing better than Prost. Uh, Sysadmin provides very easy ILPs, apparently. So we solve them within one or two seconds, and the game of life requires more uh, time. When we restrict the time per step, uh, this is expected to go down. The percent of ILP is soft to optimality, and our performance will go down. And as you see here, we really suffer, and performance does go down. Um, another parameter that's worth looking at in our system is how many determinized future do you need to get good performance? And this kind of is a nice graph showing that more futures is better. That's what you might expect. Uh, you get a similar behavior here. The slope is not as large. It's surprising that you can do well even with one future. And these are uh, two other domains. The traffic domain has uh, traffic lights that you control, and the elevators domain, you control elevators, obviously. Um, I forgot to say, in these domains, we took the IPC problems, but IPC problems had a very limited number of actions, because no planner can actually uh, handle the huge number of actions. So what we did is we essentially allowed concurrency which means that in the game of life, you can reset multiple cells. And in sysadmin, you can reboot multiple computers. The same we did on those problems. But in those problems, there are constraints, or rather the number of traffic lights was small. We couldn't make a huge number of actions over here. So here we have a moderate action space and harder ILPs. You see the times here. Uh, with a generous time per step, we still solve most ILPs. And here we're doing better than Prost. Here we're roughly the same, a little bit worse. But uh, we degrade dramatically with the time per step. We basically solve nothing to optimality with one second. This is another point about uh, the requirement for solving things to optimality. So in the traffic domain, if you increase the number of futures, and this is ridiculously small. This is five futures, seven futures, ten futures. Uh, performance start degrading. And the reason for this, I don't have the numbers on the slide, is again that 
Once there's too many futures, the ILP is too large and it's not solved to optimality. Let me skip that and come to uh, the conclusion of the experiments. Essentially, what I've shown is that if the hop heuristic is not good, we're just doing an efficient way of doing hop in high dimensional action spaces. It's not going to work. If the hindsight of, uh, heuristic is good, we're giving competitive behavior with uh, state-of-the-art system as well as completely uh, better behavior when the action space gets huge. Um, this is the first implementation, and what we've shown is that there's huge sensitivity to the size of the ILP that you're solving. And you really require enough time per step in order to solve most problems, not all of them, to optimality. So that's what I've shown you, uh, hop optimization through integer linear programming for large state and action spaces. And it's a first step. There are two styles of uh, future work that I want to mention. One is kind of obvious. If you go back to the early days of planning and satisfiability, the first papers gave a proof of concept. And then there was a very hard engineering work to figure out what encoding actually works to make this work in, in reasonable time. I think that's partly what we need here to uh, tackle what we see with uh, ILP solvability. One approach for this, which was actually used before with the bird conservation problem, is to solve each of those futures separately. This is through dual decomposition. I can talk about it during the poster. Um, and then, uh, through duality theory, combine the results and go back and forth. There's a, a way to do this. We've actually started from this and try to implement this. It's not obvious that for hindsight it actually improves, but there's more work to be done there. The most important problem that I think for future is not to just solve the hindsight optimization version of this, but to solve the real stochastic planning problem. And if you follow the same route, you end up with an exponential size uh, uh, ILP. Um, we've worked out some of this detail so that you can do this in hopefully efficiently, but this again is uh, future work to implement and see what, what works and whether it works. So thank you. <laughs>